Good morning, developers. If you are new to the channel, my name is Rob and it is CS Thursday, the day that we put our, our keyboard away. We're not going to code. We're just going to look at some computer science concept, computer architecture, what makes programming languages work. It's it's sort of the day that we, uh, if programming is electricity, that we become physicists and, and stop being electricians at least for a minute. And the, the question we're going to try and answer today is why is there a hexadecimal system? <laughs> Who on earth thought that this was a good idea to represent a number with the letter E or the letter F? It's, it hurts my head when it, whenever I've, I've seen it. And at the very least, you probably have seen it in CSS. It's how we represent color. And why are we asking this question? Well, if you, you found this video via search, then you have your reasons. If you're a subscriber, it is, it's next in line. Why am I, I going to explain this to you? It has meaning under under the hood in a big way. And, and I will say that having been an engineer for 20 years and, and worked with every type of developer, really one of the key differences between uh, the good developers I've worked with and the great ones are knowing how and why things work. And that's absolutely what we're looking at here. Uh, I did another video and I can link it in the description. It happens to have been last week. Uh, but, but we talked about why computers struggle with doing 0.1 plus 0.2. It, it doesn't equal 0.3. And we're going to kind of stay in that same vein. The reason is because of binary fractions. The hexadecimal digits really come down to binary, okay? And I will get there, but give me just a second. If we were to define a computer, and we, and we did this in the, the other video as well, but if we were to define a computer in the simplest terms possible without, without any more presuppositions than we absolutely have to make, how would you define it? The way I would define it is that a computer is a big state machine. And that's it, <laughs> right? In spite of all the awesome software there is, in spite of what AI is, is moving towards and so on, it's really just a ton of little light switches, right? All a computer is, is this. And no, that's not a zero and a one. It's, an, it's a gate, it's a voltage gate that's closed and one that's open. <laughs> it's electricity that's not going anywhere and electricity that is. That's what a computer knows is when electricity is moving around. We associate the off with the number uh, with the number zero, and we associate on with the number one or binary, right? That's what computers are based on, the two-base system, the zeros and the ones. And again, <laughs> you have trillions or quadrillions of little light switches that a computer can, can know basically what state all of them are in at, at almost the same time, and it can change all the switches almost, again, instantaneously. So that's what makes it such a miracle. But it's really, really simple. It's really just a bunch of light switches and we represent the number zero with off and we represent the number one uh, with, with on. So in terms of computer architecture, we call this when we store it a bit. That's the smallest possible thing that a computer understands is a single digit or single on off. That is a bit. But that's not the, the, the basic building block in storage, at least that, that we usually refer to. Typically, we refer to a byte. And a byte is eight bits. So you can think about it like this. We have a little piece of storage, whatever it is, and we've got there one, two, three, four, five, six, there we go, eight little slots for an on or an off to go, a one or a zero to go. So that means you can make any number that this will hold, and that happens to be two to the eighth power minus one. So that's the biggest number that we can make. If we had a one in every single slot here, we can make between zero and the number 255. That's the max number we have. So we can make 256 total combinations in one byte, okay? Why eight? <laughs> now, why eight and not something else? There's potentially lots of reasons for that, but I will give you uh, at least a few. Um, back when Intel started making their processors, it, it went like this. They made uh, the 8800 series, and that was an 8-bit CPU. Uh, we bumped up to the x86. I think it was actually 8800, 86 maybe, but those were 16-bit. And then we got to the uh, the 386, or actually 8386, and those were 32-bit. And now we are currently on i7s and i9s. Who knows, by the time you're watching this, maybe there's i11s, but those are 64-bit. What does the bit mean? Well, when, when you store something in a memory register, 
the CPU, like the, the memory register built directly on the CPU and they are fast, like really, really fast because the processor stores stuff there and can get it basically instantly for all, for all intents, human purposes. We use them all the time. Now, as a JavaScript or Python developer, you have no idea what I'm talking about. That's because Python and JavaScript is doing it for you, but we're still using them. We're just, we're doing it, or, or our language, I guess, is doing it behind the scenes for us. The, the bits here, this is the biggest possible uh, number or, or binary digit that you can store uh, in one of those memory registers. So it's 64 bits if it's a recent CPU, or it's 32, or it's 16, or it's 8. Do you see a common theme there with those numbers, right? These are all factors of eight. This is one byte, this is two, this is four, and this is eight. It, it's, it circles around this eight bit concept. So the architectures have just followed this pattern. The next computer, the next, uh, the next size architecture we need would be 128 bit. And I, I can imagine that's necessary because a 64 uh, unsigned digit is like 19 quintillion. I'm sure it'll come when we need more, but it's hard to imagine. But that is at least one reason, okay? Another reason, our color spectrum, I already mentioned this. If you want to make the color black, it's zero, 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 zero. Zero, zero is the first part is, uh, is how much red, the second is how much green, and the third is how much blue. If you wanted to make all white, you would do F, 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 okay, <laughs> we're getting to that. But this would be maximum part uh, red, max green, and max blue. 256 is what this number represents all across the board. So we have between zero and 256. That gives us, you might have, have heard the term before, but 16.8 million different shades that we can use with this system. And again, these are bytes. This right here, is a byte, it represents 256. Same thing here, that's another byte and that's another byte. It takes three bytes to represent almost any color that, that most monitors can use. Eight is also the building block for our, our storage system. We don't refer to how many bits there are in a hard drive. You say I have a one terabyte hard drive. We're up to petabytes, probably pretty, pretty soon we'll have exabytes. But again, you get the idea, okay? Eight bits makes one byte, and one byte is the absolute cornerstone, of the, the building block behind all, almost all computer storage architecture, okay? Enter the hexadecimal system, okay? Let me clean this up real quick. I'm gonna mention one more case for why we use eight bits. If you want to, to type the letter A and you wanna store it, okay, to a computer, there is no A, there aren't ones and zeros, there's just ons and offs, right? But we store it in the concept of binary. We use the ASCII system, and you can you can Google ASCII chart or something, and it will show you all the ASCII values. But in binary, the the letter A is this. It's zero one one zero 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 one. That equals the letter the the small A. Okay, you can make pretty much any character on your keyboard with a single byte. It is an eight digit binary number. All right, and if, if we total this up quick, okay, we're out here, this is, the, this is the 128 place, this is the 64, so we have 64 plus 32 plus one equals 97. So what we have here in decimal is the number 97, but that is really ugly. <laughs> I don't want to look at that. I don't wanna think about the letter A and try and remember how many zeros are there again before I get back to a one or you know whatever. Computers are good, That's they're awesome at that, <laughs> don't get me wrong. But we can do a one better here, okay? How many possibilities did we say there are in this one byte, these eight, these eight bits that we have here? It was two to the eighth power. Two to the eighth power because we have eight slots and there's only two digits per slot, all right? So there are 256. I'll put that up here. Do you, uh, do you see a relationship here between these two numbers? That's how many digits we have over here, zero through 15, right? Or rather zero through F. Do you see a relationship here that is special? <laughs> there is one, okay? 256 is the same thing as 16 squared. We were working down here with two to the eighth. Here we're working with 16 to the second. Why? There are 16 digits. We can represent this entire byte with hexadecimal with just two digits. So instead of looking at this ridiculous thing, 
what we do is we, we can grab these in, in pairs of four. Okay, so zero, one, one, zero. What does that equal? Okay, so zero and one, that's two. This is the four spot, so this is six, what we have here. So what's actually here in hexadecimal is the number six. What's the number here in hexadecimal? It's the number one. 61 is, is what the A is in hexadecimal. That's awesome. I can get excited about that. I don't like that, okay? That is the answer to our question. What is the point of the hexadecimal system? It is a really, really, really nice way, if you're a human having to look at machine code, right, zeros and ones, and you, you want some in between, right? You can't actually go to your normal numbers, your normal decimal system. You want those something in between that's not so ugly as this, bam, the hexadecimals are the answer. And we can do that with however many bytes there are, you can always represent it with two hexadecimals and it's really, really fast. I'm gonna put up here an arbitrary, uh, an arbitrary number, okay? This happens to be, uh, well, 64, 32. So we're at 64 plus 32, and then we've got eight, we've got four, and then we've got one at the bottom, okay? So in decimal, this is 96, that makes 100, this makes 109 is what we've got there, okay? At least, <laughs> at least I think it is. We can cut this up into two pieces. Instead of having to do all this math that I just did, which I didn't like doing, <laughs> okay? Instead, we can go, okay, zero, this is two, this is four. Okay, so the number we have here is six, and the number we have over here, well, this is one, that's two, so four and eight, so eight and four is 12, this is 13. Well, we can't write 13, what's 13? D. What we have here is 6D. That took almost no time, right? And if you get really fast, I'm taking longer to do the binary than necessary. But if you get really fast, you can start representing massive chunks of bytes really, really fast. So we do it one more time here. We'll have zero, zero, one, one. So this is our first, uh, our first four bits and the second four bits are gonna be one, 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 one. What is that in binary? Or what is that in hex? Well, we're sitting on three, so it's gonna be three. Over here, we're sitting on the max that we could possibly hold, which is 15 or F, that's three F. I, I could have done that in my head because I've seen it enough. With a little bit of practice, you will too. But again, that's why we have a hexadecimal system because we're working down here. If, if you have a memory dump, you know, the blue screen of death in the old days on a 64-bit system, if you were a C programmer and had to look at the memory dumps and stuff, you don't wanna see a 64-digit binary number. It's so much easier to break it up into just two digit chunks, and that is so much easier to digest. So this is our in-between. Computers only understand on and off, okay? We, we have them so that they can represent at least binary to us, but as programmers, we don't wanna look at binary, and we can't jump over to decimals. We have the hexadecimal system to stand uh, in, in place, right? For the colors, for our architecture, for our, our key values inside uh, our keyboards and so on. Okay, thanks so much for watching. I will link another CS Thursday video. I will catch you next time.